All right, what do we need to know about databases for the BEC exam? Well, you probably already know that the data hierarchy from largest to smallest goes like this. You have files consisting of records. You have records consisting of fields. Fields consist of data values, sometimes text, sometimes numeric. Data values consist of bytes, characters. Bytes are composed of bits. Bits are the smallest storage element. The oldest file structure is known as flat file, where all records were stored sequentially, one after the other. It was very easy to add new records in a flat file, but the problem with the flat file system was to find a certain record in a flat file, every record has to be searched and bypassed until the desired record is found. For a small file, that's not really noticeable. But if you have millions of records stored in a flat file system, the time it takes to search and update would become very time consuming. So we really only talk about flat files when we talk about the history of storing files because most businesses today are long gone from the flat file system. Because if you're a large company and you have millions of records stored on a flat file system, it would just take too long to search and update. So what came next in history was the hierarchy database or what they called the tree database and that was considered a major development in its day for file organization instead of the records being strung out one after the other like a flat file system they would form branches and leaves extending from a root so here you can see the root is food the two branches are fruit and meat and then each one of the branches has leaves right the fruit branch has a red leaf and a yellow leaf the meat branch has a beef and a pork leaf. Note that each tree parent record can have multiple branches and leaves like the fruit tree. The fruit tree has multiple branches and leaves, but each branch and leaf known as the child here would only have one parent fruit. Same with meat, right? Meat's another tree and each tree could have multiple branches and leaves, but each branch and leaf would only have one parent. In a business setting, this would be a tree database, a hierarchical database. And the tree is this customer queue. And you can see customer queue's address is 401 East Apache Boulevard in Tempe, Arizona. And customer queue placed two orders. These would be the branches, order number 10, and order number 15. And then order number 10 has two leaves because order number 10 consisted of two different items that customer Q purchased. Whereas order number 15 placed by customer Q only has one leave because, because order number 15 only consisted of one item. So here you can see that one customer can place several orders but each order can only be assigned to one customer. So the tree structure improved speed and storage efficiency for related data compared to the flat file system. A parent record for customer Q directly indexes the child records, order 10 and order 15, containing customer Q's orders. However, what was the problem with the tree database? Adding new records is much more difficult than even with a flat file. But this would be an example of a tree database. Note that the customer's address is stored only once in the tree database, whereas in a flat file system, the customer's address would have to be stored every time the customer placed an order. So it all started with a flat file. All records were stored sequentially, one after the other. Very easy to add new records, but every record had to be searched and bypassed until the desired record was found. Very time consuming. So we moved on to the tree or hierarchical the tree or hierarchical database was considered an upgrade in data retrieval compared to the flat file system, but the problem was adding new records to the file, so that wasn't the perfect solution either. So as computers got more popular, additional research and development created eventually what we call relational databases, which is used today, where it's easy to add new records and easy to access existing records compared to both flat files and trees. So we said as computers became more popular and more powerful, new ways of storing data became possible. 
and searching and updating became easier and more flexible because of relational databases. They're the most commonly used databases today, and the three largest are Oracle, IBM, and Microsoft Access. So in a relational database, every record is stored in a single row. Here's a row right here, and this is a record. Record number one is stored in this first row. And then every column contains a value that pertains to that record. So if this is record number one in this first row, then every column is going to contain a value that pertains to record number one. So this is record number one in this row, in this first row. Well, this column right here contains the first name. And this column here contains the last name. And then this column here, the email address. And that all pertains to record number one. Notice that each column contains one attribute of record number one. In database terminology, a file stored this way is called a table. And it looks like a table, doesn't it? And the columns are called attributes or fields, but the rows are called records. And this is terminology that the exam is going to expect you to know. The rows are called records. The columns are fields or attributes of the record. Let's go from record number one down to record number two. Each column contains one attribute of record number two. This last column here contains the email address of record number two, which is customer number two, Beth Miller. All right, let's try a question on what we've done so far. In which of the following file types does every record have to be searched and bypassed until the desired record is found? And hopefully you remember that that's a flat file system. In the flat file system, all records are stored sequentially one after the other, which was the good news, very easy to add new records, but the problem was what? To find a certain record in the flat file, every record has to be searched and bypassed until the desired record is found. For a small file, that wasn't a problem, but for big companies, you have millions of records stored in a flat file system, searching and updating became too time consuming. How about this one? Which of the following is correct regarding relational databases? A, each row contains one attribute of a record. No, because each row is a record. B, every record is stored in a single row. Yep, and every column contains a value that pertains to that record. Yeah, that sounds good. C, each column contains one complete record. No, each row does. D, every record is stored in a column and each row contains one value. No, so the answer is what? The answer is B, every record is stored in a single row and every column contains a value that pertains to that record. Okay, this is the same table that we looked at. If you look at row three, that contains the record for customer number three, Richard Leone. His first name would be in this column with a field for his first name. And then the next column would have another attribute of this record, another field containing his last name. And then there's the email address. Because in a relational database, every record is stored in a single row. And every column contains a value that pertains to that record. Every column contains one attribute of the record. So we looked at the customer table in order to demonstrate a relational database and introduce the first concept, which is a table. Most databases consist of several tables that are linked together for speed and accuracy purposes. The biggest advantage of a relational database is the speed and accuracy with which you can access the data that you need, even in a large table with lots of records. So let's get these terms down really well because the exam will expect that you know these. A table is a collection of data on one topic or entity. For example, this is a customer table and that's why it's holding information about each customer. And eventually it'll link the customer table to the other tables in the database. That's what the relational database will do. It'll eventually link the customer table to the other tables in the database. Keep in mind that databases use the term table and file interchangeably. So while this is the customer table, it's also the customer file. A record is a row of data in a table about one item. We said that row number two would be a record containing Beth Miller. 
the customer Beth Miller, her name first and last, and her email address. Each customer gets their own row or record just for them with their unique customer number. Beth Miller's, her unique customer number is two. Sharon's number was one. The fact that each customer has their unique number is going to prove to be very important as we build this database. Because that's how we're gonna connect this table, the customer table, to other tables. So each customer is gonna get their own row or record just for them with their unique customer number. And then what do we wanna know about this customer? Their first name will go in a field, their last name will go in a separate field. Where they live, they'll probably be a field for their email address as well. And we said every row across represents a separate record. In the customer file for Garcia Plumbing Corp, each row would represent a different customer with a unique customer number, highlighted in yellow. Since the customer number can only appear once in this customer table, the customer number is what we call the primary key for the customer table. Why is the customer ID the primary key for the customer table? Because it's the only attribute that can only appear one time. Any other attribute in the customer table might appear more than once. For example, you might eventually have two customers named Sharon, or you might have two customers with the last name of Harris. So those fields could never be your primary key in a customer table, because you could always have two with the same name. The primary key has to be unique, and it has to remain unique. Each field is gonna represent a different attribute of our entity, customer. Customer is our entity here in this table. While the first column contains a numeric field, the second column, the first name, contains text or alphabetic characters. The next column, last name, also contains text. And you might be wondering, why do we have two separate columns? Why can't we combine first and last name into one column? And the answer is when we create a database, we always keep our eye on sorting and the ability to sort quickly. So it's easier to sort people alphabetically if you have two different fields for names. If you have a separate last name field and a separate first name field, you'll sort quicker. Now, while you could go into the database itself and change an email address, that's risky because you could really make mistakes. You could change the wrong customer's email address. So what they do instead is forms are set up to make data entry and data editing easier. And a form would look something like this, and it's more secure than entering or editing directly to the database. The form would simply feed the information back into the table. Let's try this one. Which of the following data structures relates to the collection of data for all of a company's customers in a relational database? Is it a file or table? Remember, those two terms are the same thing in relational database. Is it a record or row? Is it a field or attribute or none of these? The collection of data for all of a company's customers in a relational database would be what? And that would be a file or table. And that would be letter A, a file or table. A file or table is a collection of data for all of a company's customers in a relational database.